Social stratification is a term often used by social scientists and anthropologists to describe the phenomenon where people are placed into discrete categories based on factors such as wealth, income, social status, occupation, kinship, and power. Sometimes these categories are completely arbitrary, such as the caste system used in India. In this system, if you're born into the labouring class, you will die a labourer. Analogy of the antelope. Let's imagine a herd of antelope, pick your favourite species, grazing in an African savanna. They keep together for protection, but otherwise feed freely on the grasses and plant life surrounding them. Occasionally there is a scuffle between males to show the females who is more deserving of their affection. However, this is usually not fatal and is more for show than anything else. Now imagine if one of the antelope of the herd decided to claim the grassland as his own. He lets the other antelope know that his area is off limits and anybody wishing to feed there would have to gain his permission. Now of course in real life the other antelope would simply ignore him or move a few meters away and continue grazing. What can he do? He can't attack us all, right? But this self-proclaimed owner of the grassland is more cunning than the other antelope. He starts spreading rumours that the grass will soon die off and that the herd need a leader to ration the re remaining grass effectively. Not everyone agrees, but he notices that a few of the larger bucks are on his side. He decides to make an agreement with them. If they help him defend the grassland from layabouts, then they can eat as much grass as they like. The large bucks quickly agree and are each granted the title of Enforcer of the Grassland. From that day on, the new leader declares to the herd that he is in charge. No longer can the other antelope graze freely on the grass, but instead they must perform duties for the leader before they can eat. If anybody tries to steal any grass, they will be attacked by one of the newly promoted enforcers. The antelope who are not employed as enforcers are either forced to be breeders, the fertile females, or workers. Workers are granted very little rights and are only allowed to feed if the leader or enforcers say so. Stratification in human society. The analogy of the antelope sounds ridiculous, right? Why would antelope give up their feeding rights just to appease a single leader? Of course, in reality, they wouldn't. No animal would allow other members of the same species to starve, or at least they wouldn't have the power to enforce such a rule. But in human society, that's exactly what happens, even to this day. For the, for the majority of human history, we have been living in small hunter-gatherer tribes that look after one another. But as we formed larger groups, certain individuals started to put themselves into positions of power. They created arbitrary roles to dictate which people belonged to which class. Stratification became rampant as agriculture took hold. Due to agriculture, there was now an oversupply of food. No longer did everybody have to work in food production or collection. One would imagine that an oversupply of food would be a good thing, but the new leaders saw it differently. They saw an opportunity to become wealthy and to take advantage of the working class. The further one was away from actual agricultural work, the more one was respected in society. Labourers were seen as lower class, while scientists and musicians were seen as belonging to high culture. As the years went on, social stratification took hold. During industrialization, inequality became the norm. Rich landowners and businessmen were freely abusing their workers and barely giving them enough to support their families. No longer could a person just go and eat when they were hungry. They were forced to work long hours just to be able to afford the bare essentials in life. All the while, their rich masters were living it up in relative luxury at the expense of the workers. Modern day capitalism relies on exploitation and stratification. The upper class often do very little to gain and maintain their wealth, often having inherited vast sums of money or tracts of land. They just have to choose a couple of wise investments, often decisions already made by their parents, and the money continues rolling in. Simply by pretending they're interested in the common man, the media praise them for being so charitable and philanthropic. The rich are promoted to a level of benevolence and fame, when all, the, when all the time they've used the broken capitalist system to hoard wealth from the lower class. Poor individuals are forced to pay rent, or else get themselves into massive debt, just to have a roof over their head. Land is not freely given to every member of society. One must either pay for it with a lifetime of work, or be lucky enough to be born into a rich landowning family. 
Rich capitalists like to falsely claim that we can all become rich, just like them. It just takes a bit of determination and hard work. But of course, it is all rubbish. They just want to keep us on side, so that we don't come to our senses and realise that we completely outnumber them. If we banded together, we could easily overthrow them, distributing their wealth in a much fairer manner. The whole purpose of social stratification is control. Just as the antelope can freely graze without another antelope forcing them to work for their food, humans could do the same. We have an overabundance of food. Australia exports about 58% of its food production. So why do we insist that only people with money can have any? For those of you who are interested, here is a recent article about edible weeds that are available across Australia. I'll post the link below. Our elite are constantly trying to take stuff away from us, but yet they happily indulge. See the policies of the current Australian leadership. The budget clearly favours the rich. Money is taken away from those who need it the most, such as children with bad teeth. If the government had their way, they would abolish Medicare and let the lower class live in squalor or die. Let's stop this stupidity and realise that we are all the same species, just trying to exist in harmony. Let's stop voting in people who only want to support the big end of town. Let's stop being a society of greed and instead be a society of caring and mutual respect. Let's help those who need it, not just those with money in their pockets. Let's allow everybody to have the necessities of life, food, clothing, shelter, and stop allowing the rich to hoard wealth that doesn't help anybody. Who needs 47 Porsche cars? Let's stop this madness.